Hello and right, welcome everybody. to the captain's table, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul with Zircaro One, Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender at the Astro Pub, and your host on Galactic Historian. Galactic Historian. Um, uh, what are we doing today, Paul? Captain's table. Sure. Yeah. Sure <laughs> what are we doing today? Uh, well, I, I was going to make a joke about how uh, we have a professional table on because everyone here has been on more captain's tables than I have. Um, so Wait, we're really going to more, more collective <laughs> captain's table time? Of, of the guests. Yes. The, the, yes. The guests have more collective captain's table time than, than I do. Um, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm going back to, to the actual definition of professional. Are we getting paid for this? Ah. I'll give you beer. Yeah, Paul. Which, I'll, I'll pay, take I'll it. I'll pay you with thoughts <laughs> and I'll go and take that. Uh, uh, all right, so I live in a minute into the show and he's derailed. <laughs> it's already derailed. Uh, yep. Off the tracks. Uh, this is the Captain's Table. For those of you who don't know what the Captain's Table is, it is a podcast slash talk show where I bring people on from Star Citizen community and we talk about Star Citizen. Uh, news, events, all sorts of things. Um, and uh, let's get started. At with least 60% uh, Star Citizen content guaranteed. You know what? I used to make that joke, and now it's almost a hundred percent Star Citizen joke, uh, Star Citizen content. But the jokes that are that Vertigo will bring will be groan worthy, and uh, oh, yeah. the 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 jokes that Fastcart will make will make us all lose our shit. And uh, <laughs> uh, and Darianator is is here to to give us on a rant about about cars and racing, cars. and uh, he'll probably talk about the Le Mans for about twenty minutes. So. For those no, of you no, no, who are actually going to rant about racing in Star Citizen. Oh, so it's It'll actually be on topic. He'll be the only one on topic for this today. Um. <laughs> so, so tw I guess today you're getting 25% of Star You're Citizen getting 50%. Content. And me and, me and Darian will talk Star about Citizen. Star Citizen and the rest of us will be all other stuff. So. Hey, you, you, you only get two fifths for me. Only three fifths <laughs> for content from Fast Guard. <laughs> Waiting for the joke. All right. Let's get started well, with introductions. 50%. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's get started with the um, uh, with the introductions. We're going to start with the, with the with uh, the bottom here, Mr. HD Vertigo, who's below me. Hey, hey, <laughs> Paul! I'm the top. If anything, no, I'm no, the one no, on right top in this you, situation. You, right now, you're looking like a power <laughs> bottom, actually. <laughs> uh, there we go. Starting off on the right foot, Vertigo. Who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Oh, uh, I am a Star Citizen content creator, variety streamer here on Twitch TV. Uh, you can find me over here on Twitch TV slash HC Vertigo. Uh, we do a lot of Star Citizen content, a lot of variety stuff as well. Uh, we just finished up Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries, which was really fun. I enjoyed the stompy robots with lasers, pew, pew, pew. We're starting uh, in the afternoons. We're doing these days, uh, what is it? Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And nice. I am enjoying, I played it for three hours the other day, and I enjoyed every hour. I was looking forward to some more today. And then there was a podcast with Fast Carton and Darge. And I'm just like, how can I miss that? Like that is that is even more fun than video games. <laughs> it's it's a memorable experience um, because yep. this is this is almost the entire crew that brought us Black Jurassic, um, <laughs> and and and, uh, and the the wonderful thing that it, that has brought the 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 dirtiest cut topic of Star Citizen right into the work, which is hygiene. Um, oh yes, yes, the hygiene <laughs> bo podcast. And the shitting milk app. So it's been, it's yes. been a while, though, Paul. Yeah. You, you and me, Dar, it's been an eight Fast Cart. Just you yeah. and me on the channel, too. Like, just, yeah. Just, just, yeah, it's been a while for me. This is, this I'm is here the, and I, I volunteer, and I saw, I saw both Darge and Fast Cart, too. I'll be like, it's going to be... It's gonna be awful. It's gonna be so. I'm, good. I'm just happy. To, I'm just happy that Paul decided to let me on on a month. It's not Black History Month. It's not Black History Month. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's a year? <laughs> what's a year? Although uh, we do, I do. I would love to be on. Uh, what is it? Soul Citizens again as the token white guy. That's always fun. It's hey, always fun to have you. Okay. Yes. Uh, Fast cart. Sp speaking of Soul Citizens, who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Hi, I'm Fastcart FC. Uh, I'm a host of I'm a host on Soul Citizen. Uh, we do podcasts. We're expanding into reaction and review. Uh, we also do bar virtual bar citizen. So that means I help bring people together, hair bears, TV peers, cat lovers, dog lovers, and those who like rope play. <laughs> and, and since I'm on the bottom, so go ahead, Gardenator. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm at Appar it. Apparently, the P Paul and I are po tops uh, today. So, yes, yeah. uh, we'll be taking control of this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, hello, I'm Darianator. I am not a Twitch uh, content creator. Sometimes I put up a video on YouTube, but mostly these days my content has been involved around being employed by JRDF. Uh, the, um, uh, the wonderful makers of uh, Star Citizen model kit ships and dioramas and crap like that and if paul yeah those things yeah yeah oh. we are uh, officially the only company officially licensed to produce those things and this weekend for uh first contact day and bar citizen day you s didn't you say that you're gonna do a painting stream this week yes i didn't do it <laughs> yeah. i'm doing it next week it's you lied funny. Yeah. He's Paul is telling lies. lies. Anyway, for this weekend, for uh, First Contact Day and Bar Citizen Day, we have uh, a ten percent discount on on all purchases on the website, and also every purchase gets put into a uh, uh, into, into a raffle for a diorama and. And also, if you go on the social medias and do a special thing, which we have posted on both Twitter, uh, all Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, you also get uh, put into a raffle for a different diorama. So, um, and to answer a question from I said, good day, sir. Uh, no, um, we are licensed, but if you're making your own ships for yourself, um, that's fine. If you're making your, sh if you're printing 3D printing your ships to sell, then CAG might have something to say about that. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, um, it, it's a good company. I I've supported them for a long yeah. time. They're all fans. They've been doing cool stuff. So yes, um, yeah. yes. And currently, and, both Cal's and JR at are at Bar Citizen in Manchester, getting mm -hmm. very drunk. I would imagine. <laughs> um. So yeah, and and I will be I I promise I will be painting it on Monday because Monday I can actually paint it. Uh, I don't know when, but like cool. Time, I will but, talk know. to Cal's about doing some sort of promotion on the socials about that. Sounds cool. Good. Just just uh, let me know on Discord. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's basically what I've been doing these days. I do their social media. I do their their things, and we're make we're coming up with new kits, and I don't yeah. know if. Uh, Hairpin? No, fuck it, fuck it. We're making an MSR and an hey! and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, oh, and, a, and there a, you go. Uh, Pisces. These are, those are the kids that are coming next. Next. I thought you already had a Pisces. It was like a skill. Yeah, I thought you had a Karakana Pisces. Karakana yeah. Pisces. Yeah. Karakana yeah. Pisces, but this is a one to one hundred Pisces. Oh. Like. Oh, okay. So it's gonna be a bigger okay. Pisces, not yeah, the yeah, diorama yeah. size. No, 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 no. That's a one to five hundred. It's gonna be literally five hundred, five times bigger. So, because nice. scales, I, I could just well, see I, HE I could just see I could just see HE vertical getting excited about about it being bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. well, like I remember, I remember um, a while, a long time ago, we had uh, Jared Huckabee talking about models that he had mm -hmm. for his shelf and whatnot. I think mm -hmm. they had like a, a, it was like a Star Citizen Live or something. And he was talking about how like. You'll have to like have different models at different scales because he had a whole bunch of Star Trek models, like the the Constitution yeah. class, the Enterprise D, uh, yeah. which is what is the Enterprise D class, Galaxy class, Galaxy. Yeah. Galaxy. And then he had like some of the shuttlecrafts too, and they were about the same size as the other models on his shelf. And he was talking about sometimes you have to adjust the size of the models so that they're all at the same rel relatively the same size on the shelf as each other. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we, yeah, we have a one to forty for vehicles, one to one hundred for fighters, one to two hundred for everything that's in between, and one to five hundred as a sort of general fleet scale. Um, that that's what our dioramas are in for the mm -hmm. giveaway. So one to five hundred stuff. The 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 uh, cutlass that um, uh, Paul showed that is one to five hundred. One to five hundred. So yeah, and the Carrick is. Yeah, and another Carrick doing... is one to five hundred and is ten inches long or twenty twenty five yeah. centimeters. Yes. Not. Nearly as long as Buster's zucchini, but oh, I was gonna make the zucchini joke. I was gonna talk about it. Buster's zucchini is, is is larger than them. That is true. Yes. Uh, all right. Mm. Well, back on. We'll pull this. We can pull this this back onto the tracks. Let's talk a little bit about Star Citizen today. We're gonna talk about three topics. We're gonna be talking about uh, three seventeen point two expectations, especially since they've kind of kind of confirmed a bunch of things. We're gonna talk about the roadmap along with that because there's a big roadmap update with adding a bunch of new mm. things to the progress tracker. Uh, salvage and um, uh, or uh, hole crunching rather than hole stripping, as well as munching, 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 munching. yeah, hole munching. munching. That's it. Yeah, um, the crucible and a bunch of other stuff as well. I was uh, surprised when the crucible showed up. 
Yeah. Like Anvil Crucible. Like I wonder, I wonder what it's going to look like because that thing's going to have to redo, have a rework. Yeah. Um, uh, and then for its concept art. Just, just from its concept art. Yeah. We'll talk about oh, that. Yeah. Later. Yeah. The, the con yeah. No, we'll talk about it. Yes. yes. And then the last thing yeah. we'll, talk, we'll discuss is um, Alien Week. Expectations for Alien Week. Their own, their own kind of discussions about these things. So we're, mm -hmm. let's get started with the uh, thoughts on the roadmap update and like 317.2 in general. Uh, Darianator. Uh, so something that I talked about during the Yacht Club thing, uh, what was it, the virtual bar citizen, is that mm -hmm. I fully support the new cadence of the patches, especially running both PTU and live at the same time. Even though it's probably going to mess up with the performance of both, like it usually does for some reason. Yeah. Um, but having live, a live branch that is getting updated with content mm -hmm. at the same time that a new PTU for the next patch with features is going on is really good. Because as soon as a PTU comes out for the next patch, mm -hmm. all people just just go from live to PTU. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. It does. It's super buggy just because they want the new things. But now the life is going to get new things as well, so it'll be in, uh, incentive for people to play on the stable patch. And you know, for content creators, that's great because they're showing a less buggy version of the game for newcomers. And that's just something that occurred to me right now. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Three seventeen two. Let me see what we got. That's exciting for me. Uh. Oh, I played Siege of Orson in the BTU. Mm -hmm. That's that's really nice. I uh, I was actually kind of hoping that it it would come out during um, uh, Invictus. Invictus. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure CIG was trying for Invictus as well for Caesar Force. Yes, but, but, that, but then, too much. But then they had 110,000 new accounts and all the servers. <laughs> kept yeah, on I guess fire, it was too much. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, What's a good thing about 17.2 that really excites me? I mean, I can see a couple things right now. Reclaimer, mm. Reclaimer derelicts, Reclaimer space and ground. Yeah. AI uh, navigation. I'm, at, I'm actually more excited about what's coming afterwards for the derelict, uh, for Reclaimers, which is the settlements with NPCs on them, actually using mm. them for, you know, habitation, not think... just a mission. Well, derelict settlements are committed in three seventeen yeah, too. They are coming on the roadmap right now. Derelict Look at settlements. It. Yeah. Mm. yeah. On on planets, uh, the derelict uh, missions, uh, the reclaimer missions space. are also in space. Are committed as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, but yeah, but the way I see it is, it's, it's a point of interest. It's more. It's like it's gonna be there. Yeah. As a settlement, but it'll be as empty as regular outposts yeah. are right now. Yeah. And or, also, also, I looked over the card. It's singular too for the uh, reclaimer settlement. It's one. It's a single. It's like the river single? in Microtech. It's a single. Oh, oh okay. Mm. It's a proof of concept. So, mm. okay, yeah. Well, yeah, because because then they have to give them variations and how they're embedded into the terrain yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but in so, are we talking about three seventeen two? Three seventeen two, and also about. anything that you need to remember from the roadmap update, like we talked about the Crucible. There's a bunch of other stuff like that. Anything that stands oh. out from the roadmap. Oh update. god, no, no. The, 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 from the updates from the progress tracker, salvage. Mm -hmm. the, oh right. Most importantly, the new player experience. This yeah. has been uh, missing yes. for such a long time. Even yes, it's alpha. There are going to be bugs, but you can't rely just on the content creators to get new people. I mean, you can say you can. <laughs> yeah, you can try. You can we have, definitely right? try. Yes, well, but no, it, it's it's better that you like Paul. You had a couple of ideas how they could do that mm -hmm. uh, that that are that are really exciting. But it, it just it just means that something has to be in game for people who maybe don't know where to go to look for. Uh, Hints and just, tips, just better signposting, in my opinion. I mean, oh, yeah, CIG sometimes they think they go overboard, but a lot of it is like the signposting kind of blends in sometimes. Like, where am I supposed to go? You're just supposed Especially to wander with around. Invictus this well, year, for Orison, Last for example, year. like, where's the spaceport? Like, you have the Cloud View District or Cloud mm -hmm. District, you have the Providence platform. What's at the Providence platform? What, what yeah. is a Providence platform? Like, the map shows you, but people have to know that there are maps like and yeah. where to find there's them. maps on the walls but you have to know they're there you have to know how to read them also also they cycle 
yeah. the screens don't always show the map. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll walk up to a, it'll be on the screen. It'll show, show the map. You'll walk up to yeah. look at it, and it'll show you like an in-game advertisement for something. And it's just like, yeah, thanks, exactly. game. I was using that. Yeah. Oh. No, no. Those maps need to be next to this each station and on permanently. So people can yeah. actually get the information they want where they think they want it. Uh, but no, but I was just saying, like, during Invictus last year, the signs had arrows. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. pointed you where to go. This year, no arrows. Like, people didn't know where to go. So there was the sign for Invictus in the shuttle bay, mm -hmm. the lobby thing where the three tracks meet. It's like, okay, now what? I'm here. Yeah, I, I got lost by myself. And, and but yeah. when, 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 once you do it once, you can, you can pretty, pretty much figure it out. But that first time, I got lost. Yeah. The yeah. only reason why I knew how to get to in the uh, the expo was there's an extra shuttle. There's a third shuttle in the station for some reason. That must be yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And then and and then on on the last day, I got lost again because I, I forgot that Drake Drake Con was going to be a defense con was going to be in a different place than 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 the regular con. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, but you're a person who plays Star Citizen every day. You know the way Orison shuttle platform is laid out. Oh, yeah. There are two there are two tracks, so mm -hmm. you know that the third track means something. But what about yeah. people who don't are familiar with Orison? People literally new, new players who just signed up, got a referral yeah. code, downloaded the game, launched it. How do I get to the show? Exactly. I saw that yeah. all the time when I was streaming. Like people were constantly asking, "How do I get to Invictus? How do I get to the Expo Hall?" Hope they learn. Because yeah. this year was a big step backwards in terms of navigation, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yes, this new player experience would be nice because they can. Not sure if they will. They can update it as soon as something something happens new happens, like a new keybind, a new feature for scanning the radar, new Moby glass. They can update it if they commit to keeping this new um, play experience. Uh, I I, I think it's a good idea to mm -hmm. just kind of every so often see as he steps back every every year or so and just says, okay, how is the new player experience? Because Star Citizen is a very layered game. It's like lasagna. There's just layers upon layers that you can I think thought you were going to say ogres. Ogres, yeah, <laughs> like onions. onions or something. Yeah. And honestly, the first the first hour to 30 minutes is is vitally important, important to hooking people into your product. Mm -hmm. Like that that first 30 minutes. And if you are super frustrated i had that experience with like eve online i lasted maybe three hours in eve online before i just gave up because it was just so impenetrable like there was there was other products on the market that like planet side 2 battlefield battle i think it was battlefield 3 and planet side 2 was around that time i tried eve online and i'm just like i don't want to give this game my time vertigo it's, it's not a learning, yeah, learning curve yeah that learning curve was just it's not a, worth it's my learning time cliff. it's a learning it's a learning cliff, cliff. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I could I could uh, put the effort in to learn how to play Eve online, or I could just go play Battlefield again. Just just uh, but, slide right into a product that I already know. Sure, but one thing that they need to introduce in, in, uh, as an aside to the new player experience is also like better, just better signposting sign mm -hmm. for for existing players. Mm -hmm. Like we know where to go. We have memorized all the landing zones and all the stations because we play the damn thing every day almost, but. Really, know, like what? What do, within do the they first need to, within but, the first but, fifteen minutes, you need to know where the spaceport is and how to get your ship and take off. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Really. So, so, so they, they 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 need to have a better way. It's fine if it's immersive, like oh, that's a sandwich shop or there's a coffee shop and, and shit like that. But for for the actual gameplay, they need a sort of tunneling towards mm. a certain direction. Yeah, they need a hand. They don't. I don't think they need to handhold. They definitely need to just ge generally gesture in the right direction. Something that would yeah. be something that would get players because this, you want something that that new players or, or, or experienced players can just go. I know what I'm doing, and then yeah, uh, with new players though that they 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 are directed to directly, so it's easier for them to do it. But well, yeah. the, the whole the whole the the whole draw of Star Citizen is the ships, right? That's what they're selling on the web store. That experience yeah. where you get to go out and have adventures, your Han Solo or whatever, Luke mm -hmm. Skywalker or whatever. And when people buy that ship, they want to get to that ship and use it as quickly as possible. So where is the spaceport? How do I spawn my ship? How do I open the spaceport? I see that question a lot in, with like, Invictus. Mm -hmm. And some of the some of the spawn points, some of the landing zones are just almost impenetrable in terms of navigation. 
Um, they're immersive. They're they're laid out in a sensible kind of city kind of style. I Paul Paul would probably appreciate that as a as someone who appreciates lore. Just wandering around, po poking at like all the various cool stuff. Like oh, Loreville, there's the spotlights, the tower, the very impressive guards with sniper rifles yeah. above you, armed guards all over the place. A new player's not going to really notice that stuff. No, mm. no. So there, I don't know what game it was, but you could oh, Dead Space. Mm -hmm. Um, you could set up a waypoint on the map. You pressed a button, yes. and an AR line would show you the path where to go. Yes, yes, that I would sort love, of and, thing. And I, I've been playing Jedi Jedi Fallen Order, and the map in that game. As soon as I opened it up, as soon as the tutorial opened up the map for me, and I'm just like, oh my god, yes, I love this map. Star Citizen mm -hmm. should have this map. It's great. I mean, mm. maybe it'll make sense if if you're wearing a helmet, they can give you some some sort of AR view in, mm. inside the helmet. But if, you, if you're not wearing a helmet, which is what most people do, and I mean, you, you don't spawn in with a helmet, I don't believe. But Microtech also sells contact lenses with AR. Yeah. AR contact mm. lenses. I mean, they're not uh, currently. It's expected, you know, kind of implemented that everybody's wearing those. You can't take them off. Mm -hmm. But yes, like like you should get all those AR markers, w whether you have a helmet. Yeah. You should get more of them when you have a helmet, just because they have a full on visor. But yes, at least basic navigation, hopefully, will come in with the new visor update and and yeah. FPS scanner and stuff like that. Yes, hopefully. I just, I just hopefully, gotta say. Yeah. I just gotta say, I I, I, can, I can barely st stick myself in, in, in the eye to, to put the contact in, in my real eye. How am I gonna do it on, in, in, on, a, on a character? <laughs> like clicking a button. Yeah. Well, you see, it's the future, uh, fast card. <laughs> all your eyes are contact lenses now. Uh, yeah, all your eyes are contact lenses now. And that was uh, like, just going back to the new player's experience, like, Port All Star was great for that. Mm. But we don't spot a Port All Star anymore, so. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know if we got anything else we want to talk about. Fast card. Yeah. Experience. Let's move on to fast card. What was the question again? Three seventeen point two. Anything like like? Oh. What are your initial thoughts on three seventeen point two and the roadmap update? I'm um, looking at the roadmap update and the deluxe thing. I haven't really um, gone to, in, into the um, missing stuff that, that much, but yeah, I, I've I've seen people. I watch people play Seeds of Origin. Origin that, that seems fun for, for people who who are into that gameplay. But um, as far as the progress tracker and stuff like that, the salvage vehicle vehicle munching that uh, bringing in salvaging that that, that 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 seems great. I am a uh, Okay, well, I, I, I'll, touch, I'll touch on two things. First, the, the, the new player experience. I'm still of the opinion that it's a bit too soon to bring in new player experience, but I can see why TIG is doing it when you have 110,000, over 110,000 mm -hmm. new players and over and almost 2,000 coming in every day. So you need something like that. Because we had one, a tutorial. I don't know if people remember. I, 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 a long ago. time ago, back in the 2.0 days. With Gilly. Right. See, I remember the name. It wasn't Gilly. Yeah, that's Gilly. it. Yeah, Gilly. it. So, yeah, so, so we had one, but the problem with that is it, it, it became out of date because it kept changing stuff. As, and as, the script game, system broke. I never progress. completed that tutorial, by the way. I never completed yeah. it because the, the doors wouldn't open. The guy wouldn't continue to the scripts. And something always go always go wrong before I got into it. It worked the hangar. perfectly in the first version, and then in the yeah, first version. Broke. But after that, yeah. So I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. A, I don't know if they're going to iterate on it. That's the word. Um, as, as time goes on, are they going to let it fall by the wayside like they did the other one? The, well, that's, that's the problem that's with like my, a tutorial. That's is that you it, star citizen is something they constantly have to update, right? They yeah. constantly have right. to fight bugs and patch stuff and. Maintenance, maintenance, that's a huge problem with Star Citizen, is they got to take time out of their day to fix, to put out fires constantly, because stuff yeah. breaks. And sometimes it's, it's sometimes big, big Maypole features break, like Siege of Warrison or Xenothread or Ninetales, and like you want that stuff to work, because that's the whole reason the patch is going out, is to draw people in with this big event. And if the event stops or stalls or just doesn't go to the next, because we had that with the original Xenothread, where it just wouldn't continue. It would just it would go into the third phase and the the, the javelin would just stop and none of the interests would spawn. Um, so oh, yeah, a tutorial that... a tutorial requires constant maintenance and upkeep every patch to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. So I like the idea of CIG stepping back and taking time to do a new player experience because it kind of they can look at like pain points, like for example, people trying to find their way to Invicta, or people trying mm -hmm. to find the way to the spaceport. Once they get to the spaceport, they get out of the hangar. That's their problem. 
right? We got we got little pop-ups on your screen that hey, push space bar to go up, push W to go forward. That's great. Sorry, sorry. So, yeah, that, 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 I, so I, 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 I do worry. I hope they, I hope they'll continue to, to iterate on it, and, and they won't just let it fall to the wayside like last time. The yeah. other thing is freight elevators. I worry about these because these are like the boss monsters of this of this MMO. Like, you, you, yeah. you, you think there's no end game? No, the end game is elevators, and now we're gonna have freight elevators. They're like the in them monsters, yeah. like uh, uh, notorious notorious monsters from other MMOs. So, if I mean, if if the elevator can just come down and you're in the wrong place and it, and, and you die because it, 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 it knocked you out the station, now what are these freight elevators going to do to you? <laughs> Oh, you're gonna be you're gonna be afraid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> oh, bad, bad go. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like we have we we have like the enemy enemy elevators that deposit enemies into bases for us so we can fight them. We have elevators that take us to our starships. We have elevators that take us to like transit systems. We have elevators that take us from various floors everywhere. It's just, we have. It's. It's yeah. and the freight elevator. It's great. What you need, what we really needed for Star Citizen with physicalized cargo, is a way to delete the cargo from the game world without actually having it go pop, like just just vanishing in front of your eyes. Because that happens with like when you call a ship. If you, if you go to like Platinum Bay Vehicle Services at an outpost and you call out your Dragonfly, it just spawns there in front of you. And see, Chris Roberts probably doesn't want that. He probably doesn't mm -hmm. want stuff to just magically appear. Yeah. So the freight elevator is one of those things you can move it into the elevator, the door closes, it deletes it inside the elevator, it's gone, you don't have to see it disappear, and then uh, yeah. uh, makes some noises at you, it opens back up, ready, ready to receive some more. That is also I, 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 why I, I, they're I, moving to hangars for everything instead of landing pads, because you land you will be able you will land in a hangar and that hangar itself will get decoupled from the door and the exterior. Of the other I don't know if they're going to the... do that, Darge. I don't know if they're going to have like instanced hangers. Yeah, it's not going to be instanced. Kind of instanced, but it'll be still in the world. But how do you expect like a hundred people to land at a spaceport that has ten hangers? Um, just... oh my God, I think they talked about it a long time ago. I think they were going to force people to like land elsewhere, like go to the spaceport. Mm. No, no. The latest version is that as soon as the doors closed the hangar gets decoupled from the exterior. So another person could call up ADC uh -oh. and get the same hangar, the door uh -oh. opens, and they get an empty hangar. Okay. So you kind of get shuffled around in space. Yeah, that's kind of like instance hangars. That's what I would imagine. Yeah, yeah it kind of is, but it, it's, it's still connected to the lobby. So if you press... Yeah. A long time ago, they said they were just going to add more. They were going to expand the number of hangars. They did. They're still going to do that. Orville. They're still doing that. They're still it's going to be do that, but, it, like, but it's still, it's still so, like, like oh yeah, Lorville cannot, Lorville cannot sustain a hundred person server. Yeah. If 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 we had like a a, a jump town, a jump town event, jump town two event at around Lorville, like we had like reclamation disposal, Orinth was kicking out yeah. drugs, and you had to take him to Lorville. It, with 100 people on a server, Lorville would just get slammed. You, there's not mm -hmm. enough hangers to deal with like that yeah. that yep. level of traffic. Yeah. Right now, no. So, so that's what, what? that's what they're dealing with. So, you, you after you land in the hangar, doors close, and in terms of it, people looking, watching from the exterior, you're gone. And then when you walk out of the ship, you take the elevator to the lobby, you're gone. They are free to remove the ship, so you're not getting that popping in and popping out of the, unrealistically. Fast card. Thank you. Uh, one thing. Um... AC Vertigo mentioned uh, a bit ago, talking about how the elevator will make noise to, to, to let you know when it's done. I wonder about the noise a freight elevator will make, because if it goes something <laughs> like, oh, I'm out. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, it's going to be crunching game. and gnashing. And... Crunching and gnashing, yeah. all right? So, it yeah, reminds that, me of the sounds the... Uh... Yeah, the uh, those drop off points, those FedEx drop off points in Star Citizen. The doors will close. You'll start hearing the gears turning. Like, what are they doing to this package in there? It sounds like they're shredding the damn thing. That's mm. Yeah, but that's it, that's it for me for three seventeen two. Okay, Vertigo three seventeen two and uh, the the uh, the roadmap update. Your thoughts? I mean, obviously, I'm looking forward to the Seizure Origin. I didn't play it. I didn't get on. I was. Uh, I think it was on break. 
I was like having some health problems, so I wasn't streaming mm -hmm. or doing anything with Star Citizen. Um, so I didn't. I haven't seen anyone play it, so it'd be like new to me. So I'm looking forward to it. I hear there's some issues with it. I'm excited for the Siege of Origin. Obviously, the derelict reclaimer missions. I'm looking forward to because I'd love to see more space based stuff. Like a lot of the derelict missions in space right now are kind of like eh. Some mm -hmm. of them don't even work. Some so we've had the same derelicts for a long time. The 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 Freelancer, the Cutlass Rex, the Constellation Rex uh, in space, the Caterpillar, the Starfarer Rex in space. And it's always going to be nice to see stuff like that come and get refreshed. In fact, I would love to see IG just kind of remove all that stuff and just const just build new Rex off the gold standard mm -hmm. ships that they have mm -hmm. uh, currently in the game. Okay. Oh, and speaking uh, of Siege of Orison, if you played it in PTU, uh, Jake tells me that that is not everything. There's going to oh, be more. Oh, there's more stuff. Yeah, add more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, we're obviously I'm excited more. for AI AI planetary navigation because it means we get uh, fauna. You know, we're one step closer to having what are what are those things? The boreal stalkers wandering boreal around, stalkers. or those little crap things. Pause that you we're for doing. a moment because I don't do this enough. But if you look at the, right above Darge's head right now, suddenly you will see, if you're watching this on YouTube, you will see a link to a video I did on the lore of the five <laughs> five, five animals, which we will likely yep. see in Star Citizen Universe. And the, one of those is the Boreal Stalker. So if you want to learn more about mm -hmm. the fauna that we're probably going to see soon, uh, then check that yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Sorry. within the next two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> soon. Paul, soon. Paul, hey, Chris I'm, Roberts, soon. <laughs> Paul, Paul, right now, I'm trying to click on Dardinator, but he's not doing anything. He's not making any noises. Not, he's not saying he likes YouTube me. YouTube video. He, this is for the YouTube, YouTube audience. Yes. And honestly, Derelict's points of interest, Derelict sentiments, a uh, reclaimer on the ground with actual people living inside of it. I'd love to see that, either whether it's pirates or NPC friendly NPCs. I'm excited for that. Additional station Lagrange points, even though it's not something super necessary, they're still expanding the stand system with like all the ancillary things because we didn't have a full Lagrange point system for Microtech and Arcorp. So this is going to mm. finish that off. Mm. I hope they bring uh, the small stations back instead of these. I know. Huge no, I think it's going to be those ring sa From the yeah. looks of it, I think though, I think they're not going to use those old ones back in like three three five. You're talking about. I mean, yeah. they have them in AC. Yeah, yeah. Marine Commander. Yeah. Yeah. I Even though they're tiny. Yeah. The the one thing on the three seventeen two patch that I'm really kind of underwhelmed by is the illegal delivery. The illegal I saw them on Inst I thought I saw yeah. them talk about on Star Citizen. It was inside Star Citizen. I'm like, we already have all those elements already. Like they're just mm -hmm. kind of showing us stuff they already have in game. But I guess they're hooking up the reputation system. Unless mm -hmm. somebody else wants to try to correct me on that one, Paul, you yeah. got something more on that? Uh, it, basically, what they're doing with the illegal illegal missions is it's uh, an off branch of what we have already. Uh, it's it's much more akin to what we had with. Um, previously like the previous illegal missions where you had like the rs1 suits and the mm -hmm. the mobby glass computers and the osoyan hides and those things mm -hmm. it's gonna be like that uh it's, the it's human the same food thing. bars the human food bars mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Banu, is that Banu. food made from humans or is it food for humans yes the banu aren't yeah. exactly very clear <laughs> it's a soil and green thing yeah yeah mm. Uh, to serve men. Can I say? Can I say? Can I say? I'm, I'm surprised no one. I'm surprised no one is decided about to retaliate a base, but maybe I shouldn't be. But yeah. Well, I know. I know. I know. A lot of people aren't because a lot of people bought the retaliator base a long time ago because it was a free. It was a free torpedo bomber, and yeah. now the retaliator base is going to come out. They're going to lose their torpedo bomber, and they're just going to have a big brick of a ship with nothing in it. Well, it it, it does mean one good thing. Hopefully, the the, the retaliator, ba retaliator base being worked rework. on means that the retaliator yeah. rework and also means that modularization modularization should be coming out around the same yeah. time. Yeah, the box. The box. Yeah, so 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 hopefully we'll get the uh the Vanguard is basically the same ship but mm -hmm. with different yeah. central CIG sections. is going to figure out the modularity system. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have I think the Bucks for the Vanguard, the retaliator has modularity and I believe the 600i also uh, the center is a little bit modular, or is yeah. that well, two we'll, different we'll, ships? Well, we'll see with the new with the rework because that's getting mm -hmm. completely changed anyway. The yeah. But hopefully, the hopefully rework. that will make the uh, the caterpillar have different modularity, sort of modules. Yeah. If, or and at least maybe it's little a little command module Deborah. being able to to uh, to because well, well, we already have ship to ship that, docking. That's, I think that's the different. Merlin and yeah, the, that, cat, the Connie. 
I think I think that's slightly different, um, but it I think it, like like all the pieces coming together should yeah. make. I think that I think the caterpillar work. is really low on a gold standard rework, though. Gold yeah. standard, work. And, 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 and and somewhere really low on 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 the on the scale uh, that reported for modularity at least is the endeavor. That's gonna be heavily yeah. modular, but that's gonna be like the last thing that well people say. I mean, last. mean John Cruise have... nightmare. John Cruise yeah. Yeah. Waking, waking Nightmare. <laughs> waking Nightmare. <laughs> sure, sure, but that's going to come when they have all the system in, in place, so when yeah. they actually make the ship, they can just go plug in this system here, plug in that system and here, and release the ship in a fully working, working let, let me, And let me, let, me give this, let me give this podcast a shot of hopium. Okay. Just the, probably wait, the worst wait, wait. thing. Wait, wait, wait. The Sultan of Salt is going to give us some hopium? All right, let's, yes. I'm ready for this. I'm ready I mean, for right, this. Brace yourself, everybody, Oof. for for the one I'm thing I should up. never do in a Star Citizen podcast: CIG Gold Standard uh, Retaliator, right? Modularity. CIG starts working on modularity. Maybe we start seeing more modular ships up for up for pledge. More Ooh. concepts with modularity yeah. in them. Thank that's why they. Them. That's why they stopped doing it. Was because they realized because originally the idea of modularity was pr pr quite obvious. They said they're thinking, let's not make as many ships. Let's just take ships and make them more modular, so that way we have two ships in one one hull, so we don't have to yeah. work, make, waste time making a brand new ship. Then they realized it was as complicated as making a brand new ship, so they just stopped doing yeah. it. So yep. who knows? Oh, Paul. But, but, but also, Go ahead, Vesper. So, Paul, if, if, if AC Godio is trying to give us hope, could, uh, can you check the phone to see the, to check the temperature of hell right no, now? I'll see if hell uh, falls over. We should, we should call Execute and and see if uh, see how t t how cold it is in Tasmania. He'd probably let us know if hell's yeah. frozen over. Okay. Actually, no, no, no. Hold on. Uh, I think there's a hell Alaska. Let <laughs> me like look at this up. No, you wanted to say something. I'm just. He's looking at the checking. temperature of hell. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, 15 degrees in Helsinki, Finland. <laughs> Helsinki. Uh, hold on, what is I going to say? It's, oh, right. it's uh, 73 no, no, degrees. Um, 23 degrees Celsius in Hel Hel Mich Michigan. So. Uh, <laughs> now, the, 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 thi the thing about modularity is that backend modularity has been in for a while now and it's completely working. It's the front end uh, player facing modularity that they need to address, which. Mm -hmm again requires ui and user experience and yeah. some sort of immersive diegetic system for it to all work like you can yes it can work by just pressing a button and the torpedo bay vanishes and the you know crew quarters oh my god like up, they have to have in. these stupid systems you know when i was a mechanic how i how we wanted to get stuff changed on a piece of equipment you go over, you, you fill out a piece of paper, you hand it to the foreman, and the foreman assigns a mechanic to do the job, and then you order parts, the parts show up, and then you start working on it, and then it rolls out the side of the shop as a different piece of equipment. Like, basically, you open your Moby glass, you tell them exactly what you were to do, you submit the work order to, a, like, a shop or something, it goes, it, the doors close on it, and then a timer starts. Sure. Yeah. And then the doors open back up, and the work is finished. But. Done. But. When it when personal hangers come in, yeah, and you have your hanger monstrosity in a in a asteroid somewhere, going back to the original hangers, you have several rooms full of hangers for mm -hmm. all your ships. Where are the ships gonna disappear to? You're gonna have to have machinery and NPCs or you working on the ship because that's you just, what Chris wants. You just have a timer start. Mm -hmm. And then you what? leave the hangar because the timer is going to be long enough. You're probably like, do you want to sit here and watch it? Watch your ship for the next half yes. hour? Yes. Yes, I would, would actually. Yeah, okay. people would. Uh, yeah, people I, would. I, I, <laughs> what about those of us who have a problem now? Like, you know how, like, as soon as you land a ship, you have, you have a limited amount of time before your ship gets stored and stored, yeah. I don't make it in time. That's going to be tr trouble for some, for some like me or me in particular. If, if there's like a penalty or something like that, if you're, if you're not out of the room in time. I think I think it's more than hangers, likely. I think it's more than ships likely. are not going to disappear anymore. I have a feeling that if you have if you're sending like a ship off to getting getting repaired or to get like modified, custom the, cousin crows. The the simplest uh. answer is to um, have you the, the, all of the because we don't have personal hangers anymore. They're probably redoing the personal hangers entirely. 
is to have the bottom of the personal hangars where each ship is be an elevator and it'll open up the elevator and then your ship will descend down into the nothingness or go up into nothingness and then it'll close and then it'll re- return down or return back up and then it'll be a timer starting and if you want to see it mm-hmm. getting worked like on, elite dangerous go, yeah, how they, they do the yeah. how the landing yeah. pads that go inside the uh, how big yeah. how big do you think these hangers are going to be now? Because like if I have a if I have a merchantman there, it had to lower lower that merchantman down. No, no, no. Forget the merchantman. We have a we have a perfect example of a game of, of why Paul's idea is not going to work. The Carrick. Yeah, that that thing barely fits in the hangar. It's, it's it goes into right now. <laughs> well, now let alone yeah. having a, having a floor that drops out from underneath that thing. If you're off just a little bit, that thing's just going to slide in there. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but uh, oh, jeez, mm. exactly. So, so you're gonna have to have like robots that come out from all the doors and then lift the ship up, you know, and then. Yeah. Or you can just have it. You 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 fill out the work order, and they have a separate set of hangars nearby that you yeah. fly over to, and you deposit the ship into. Get out of your ship, and yeah. it tells you to leave the hangar, or it's gonna give you crime stat. Because of And you leave the yeah. hangar, and then the timer starts. The ship's gone. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. Why, or they why, just why, come why, get the I, ship from you. I don't know. Why why do you get find that to leave your own hangar? I don't know. Okay, maybe that's just I'm just I'm just throwing I'm, <laughs> I'm spitballing. Mm-hmm. No, no, well, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing saying. for Cousin Crows for, and stuff like that, you will actually have to land in Cousin Crows hangars yeah. to have your ship modified on. And then I, I can imagine you have to fly over you. to like yeah. their little docking ports. Yeah. You can say South Escort? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, with me looking at 317.2 and and the the other things, uh, I mean we didn't talk about the crucible. The crucible is pretty big. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's one that a lot of people want to talk about. Uh, now I think it's, it's more than big. likely. I mean, yeah, it, it's not huge, but it's big enough to to hold a uh, a, a hornet, hornet. And, st- and still hornet. have mm-hmm. three levels <laughs> of, of three decks. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's three decks. Uh, it's it's like three decks on this ship itself, and then it's got the scarab um, like. Like garage. G- garage garage on it's, top the little yeah. observation pilot deck mm-hmm. bridge kind of thing oh that's good that's good that's still gonna be amazing because you have the that bridge has to that rotate rotates. i believe yeah. why mm-hmm. chris <laughs> and they're <laughs> not rotates, good and they're not good there's two ways they can go with that the entire bridge rotates or it's just the interior of the bridge rotates and i don't know which one i kind of want more oh, probably um, the, just the, the interior of the bridge rotates and the windows stay I could just have the whole thing rotate, honestly. It would be simpler. That way yeah, you don't have true. to worry about, like, what happens if a player gets stuck between a piece of equipment in the bridge and between the stationary glass? Mm-hmm. What happens there? <laughs> it kills them, I guess? Yeah. You gotta uh, notify your next, next of kin. Yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. Um, um, I'm expecting the Crucible to get like a a, a concept update to go, yeah. come in line with like the more modern like Anvil it, look. It's only four weeks um, is the current the current sprint, and it's like n- yeah. n- normally if they think it's going to take a long time, even if it shows like only four weeks, it'll say like it's a bigger weeks. ship though. But it's it's straight up only says four weeks, so I'm guessing what so they're doing they have the four a lot weeks. done already. They Maybe. may have a lot done, or or the four weeks is just a uh, 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 the them getting it. Thing? To see if, like if yeah. they can change it because they remember they they had it in gray box at one point it was oh. it was in like white box or gray box stage and then they just dropped it that was yeah. mm-hmm. there's an entire walkthrough on an isc or not isc i guess it was around the verse back then and then around yeah. the verse yeah, yeah yeah where they where they walked through the entirety of it all white boxed out so yeah i would i would like them to see them drop the repair arms for drones just make it a drone ship yeah, I can see it because they do have a drone. The drones are kind of silly. There. That I mean, was not the, not the, the arms are kind of silly, in my opinion. Um, it, it seems like the arms are the basis. Like the crucible is really the basis for. Like I think it's going to be our Vulc, Vulc, or not Vulcan, our uh, vulture. The crucible seems like it's likely to be the vulture for repair. Whereas like the vulture is the mm-hmm. first salvage ship we get, and we're gonna get the. I think the the crucible is going to be that first professional ship. Yeah. So. And the Crucible actually kind of makes me feel kind of weird because you figured the Vulcan, not the Vulture, the Vulcan, Vulcan. which is the Aegis repair ship repair and refill, would, would be needed for Squadron 42. Yeah. So that would get higher priority. Because if Chris Roberts wants like really large spanning missions, like very free flowing missions, mm-hmm. and we had this with um, uh, Free Space, uh, where you had fairly long, fairly intense, fairly intense lengthened missions, like 20 yeah. minutes, 20, 30 minutes in some missions. 
and you would run out of munitions. Your ship would get damaged, components would damage in free space. And you'd call in a resupply ship that would repair you and rearm you uh, so you can continue playing the mission. And those missions, uh, Free Space was a beloved game, mm -hmm. Free Space 2 as well. Um, so I, I figured the Vulcan would be needed for Squadron 42, and you'd see that a lot higher in the list instead why? of the Crucible. But the Crucible could be used as well. I mean, what, why, why Vulcan over Crucible? Because the Vulcan is uh, smaller, smaller, more discreet, can be fit into more places, and, and it's probably also, be useful in the earlier campaigns. It's also a rearm and repair as well as refuel. Yeah. It does everything. Yeah. Rearms, yeah. repairs, refuels out yeah. of off its drones. Yeah, but yeah, but it kind of only can cater to smaller ships. But then again, yeah. you as guess a player will also be smaller be. ships. Mm. Guess what mm -hmm. you're going to be in in Squadron Forty Two all the time? <laughs> Fighters. Yeah. Fighters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the Vulcan um, makes more sense in my mind than the Crucible. Okay. But the Crucible, you call a Crucible in, you just let dock with the bay, and it repairs you and it kicks you back. I want to say a Crucible also looks probably. Probably looks cooler than 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 the, than the Vulcan, especially mm -hmm. in, in, when it's done. So maybe that's why. Yeah. The rule of cool is paramount. Yeah. 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 Um, and in terms of three sixteen dot two, I think the uh, I'm gonna go 16. with oh, oh three sixteen three seventeen dot two numbers. It's called seventeen two. <laughs> 17 why why three? I mean, we've been in the three point zero branch yeah, for right. how many years, Paul? The next patch. The next patch. The next patch. <laughs> <laughs> the Jesus patch. Yes. It's the Jesus patch, right? Oh gosh, oh, I hate that. Jesus Patch gonna fix everything. Now, anyone who know who who hasn't been around for a long time doesn't know that the Jesus Patch was this term that was used for a long time. It's like the patch that's going to make the game suddenly good. And I did an entire yeah. rant about how that there is no such thing as the Jesus Patch. The Jesus Patch. Does I don't know. Three point seven I'm just, I'm was quite messianic. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is no Jesus Patch to Star Citizen. It's just gonna be one day. It's like, hey, it's fun now. Everybody come yeah. play. Mm. Yeah, and, and I, I always like to say, I would like to say, it won't be a Jesus patch; it'll be the Holy Ghost patch. It'll be the Holy mm. Ghost patch, yes. <laughs> um, but I, I think with three seventeen point two, the biggest takeaway I have is it feels like, and I think this is important in general with the content that's in there. It's important to remember that it's a content patch, but it feels like there's a lot of content in there that's being added, or like systems that are being added that don't have content yet, like. Vertigo pointed out it's just one Reclaimer settlement, not a ton, one Reclaimer settlement. We're seeing Reclaimer missions, but we already have salvage missions for, or, or uh, like derelict missions for ships. It's just now that there's going to be a Reclaimer added to it, not just and the CIG, well, well, it's not, I, I, I hope that CIG is going to add the Reclaimer and they're going to come in and they're going to fix up the, the Reclaimer mission with more stuff, more content. Because we saw a long mm. time ago, CIG kind of teased the idea that NPCs will be inside those missions floating around with us in zero gravity. But like I just realized fire. something. I yeah. just realized something. That this reclaimer, they putting way too much effort and just way too much effort into making the, the derelict version to then somewhere down the line say, okay, we're going to completely redo the reclaimer in terms of interior and exterior and functionality, so so whatever like, did the, the derelict the reclaimer we get is to... pretty close to gold standard as is. It just needs components. I'm not quite well. It also the, needs a stub ship. Yeah. Well, Cutter. we talked, we kind of talked about this. Uh, look, I think I settle on accepting that if it's just attached to the docking port above, that'd be fine. Yeah. Like like a, like a, like a like a. Well, those vertical docking ports are going away. They, they don't work. See, see, exactly. That's what I mean. So, but the reclaimer has a vertical docking port, and if the the wreck version okay. Okay, of, okay, the, okay. of the reclaimer has, you a, could has change a that docking, docking port, port to be a horizontal docking port by just rotating it ninety degrees in that one room. But you can't. That. They can't. It's well, in the fucking middle. No, I'm yeah. gonna say you got to rotate the whole ship ninety degrees and just go, go out sideways. Oh, then it's horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's in the ceiling, but that one room is part of the is on the one side of the of the uh eating space, right? So uh, that airlock, that middle, airlock room butts up against the left there, side of the hole. So you are, can easily just put a door right there. No, there but on the exterior, sides. it's right in the middle. Yeah. On the what? Exterior? It's right in the middle. On there, the exterior, are, it's right in the middle. Yeah, there are, but there's there nothing are... on the left side of that wall. There's that wall is a bulkhead. You could just put a big corridor right there. No, the only thing you need to do is add a ladder to it so people can climb through it. That's yeah. it. Mm. Rotate it, rotate it 90 degrees and just walk out like a, like a normal thing. It's every, you know, I yeah. don't know. 
My, anyway, anyway, anyway I'm, no, no, what I'm saying is they put too much effort into this to change it down the line. So yeah. they kind of have to settle on, okay, this is how the Reclaimer is going to be. Because if we change the normal ship, we're going to have to go back and change this yeah, derelict this that we stuff. just made. Mm -hmm. mm. Unless so CIG I, for the derelict is going to update the Reclaimer to... Well, here's the thing about the Reclaimer. Yeah, here's, the thing. More here. here's the thing about the Reclaimer. The Reclaimer already has two docking ports on its side. Yes, you're right. Kind of airlock things, yeah. Yeah, they have two docking ports already exist, airlocks that exist. So if it needs to do docking, it can do that. They just need to tr swap those airlocks out to the new airlocks and they're done. That's all they yeah. really need to do. So so when we get the, the derelict, I think we may actually see what the future for the rework will work like. If the, if the airlocks look different, it's just because... You know, you know what I mean? Because they don't want to make one derelict and then change the normal ship and then go change the derelict again. Because I hope, fucking hope, that they've learned that that's just twice the work they have to do. My prediction is that they'll probably have the derelict, but just, they just ignore that part. It'll be like split in half, and that part is missing. So you yeah. don't have to worry yeah. about it. I mean, that's how some of the other, uh, some of the other ships work. Like for the Constellation Rex, they, they just have the escape pods missing. Yeah. Or there's yeah. certain parts of the ship that are just junked up, like beyond recognition, like the turrets mm. and whatnot. They're gone. The seats are all gone. The escape pods are missing. Um, the Merlin's gone. On, on like the, 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 yeah, it looks like the Merlin's been detached. The doors are closed on it. And those things are still work. They still look like ca constellations when you go look at the wreck site. Mm. It's just like if you look really close at all the details, like, yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah, that's not there on the, on the model. If you want to nitpick it, you can. Um, all right. So in general, though, I oh, can move on to the Alien Week discussion here. Uh -huh. the, my point with the whole discussion was, or the whole point, my, my point was that I feel like the 317.2 is one of those patches where we're getting a lot of content, but we're, the, a lot of the, the features that are being added, like the nav mesh, like what, why does the nav mesh matter? Well, it matters down, down the line, you know, in the future patch, it matters, but it, Will it even have any point? Like, will we see NPCs walking outside of a bunkers now? You know, will we well, see? Well, we kind of already see NPCs walking into a landed ship and just sitting down on a chair because because people have been posting screenshots like they, they come to their to their their cutlass that left the door open and NPCs just in one of the jump seats. Really? People just walking yeah. into the, they're sitting down. Yeah, I've seen yeah. screenshots on Reddit. Hmm. Uh, so NPCs like, just be in the back of someone's cutlass. Boarding people's cutlasses? Yep. yep. Hmm. Maybe they, maybe there is some behavior already in there, but it's it's hard to see because we it's we don't have that confirmation yet. So I think when it comes mm -hmm. to like, we'll see some of that stuff if, if we confirm that like, you know, uh, there are now uh, NPC ships which will spawn and then return, go, come down to like a bunker mission and then let out a bunch of AI who will then take the elevator down and go fight you or show show up and then uh, you'll when you get out of the bunker you have to fight these ai that are outside that sort of thing maybe we'll see that in the future because we know that there are things like the um ships landing ai's landing ships and we know that there are uh there was at one point the idea of npc transport missions being being floated around for cig mm -hmm. to the point where they added it to 316's patch and confirmed it and then mm -hmm. removed it <laughs> like in a, in a oh, couple of there, weeks. There are those public transport terminals at, at spaceports that are going to need some sort of functionality. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. But this planetary nav mesh, this is like the dynamic mesh where you ha get a ship with its own nav mesh and you mm -hmm. land it on a planet with its own nav mesh and then the nav meshes combine into one so that NPCs know that that, that is something that they can navigate to and mm -hmm. if they have to pathfind to a destination, they can trans the transition between one and the other. Yeah, but I mean, with until we have actual like missions or ability, like AIs to be able to take take advantage of that, it feels like... It's just content or just tech that doesn't have any content attached to it. Yeah, so and, and good, all of that just, just waiting for server meshing because the AI mm -hmm. is just the derpiest ever be without it. Yeah. So we'll have to see for a lot of that. So it's important to remember that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing is cool. Like, for instance, Siege of Orsons. Great. It's going to be like a weekend. Mm. You know, it looks great, but it's going to be a small portion of, of the game that you'll be able to play for maybe a week or two. Yeah, um, but you know what I want? Good. The, the, the up alongside Siege of Orson is those locations 
with the mission removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just have you uh, been there? I've been there. Yeah, and they they yeah, you have the golf course and you have the towers with the restaurants and everything. I just want that to be like a location in Orison that I can go to. Yeah. You know, because 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 fun because 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 that's where people go. It's, 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 it looks like a really good place to hang out in. Actually, yeah, it looks like it looks like a place people live. Mm. All right, let's move on to the next one, and I'll I'll go do the same rotation we normally did we did before because uh, actually no, I'll have to start with fast card. We need to wait for Vertigo to come back here. Fast card, mm. Alien Week. This is your your baby. Let's talk about Alien Week. Yes, do, Alien do, Week. Uh, do do yeah, the thing. I don't, I don't know. Do, do the things, Fast Card. I, <laughs> do the thing. You want me to do it? Yeah. I, I, I tried to retire it, but you know, it, it came back because at the at the end of um, I see um, this, this past week, you had said it was going to be all about the measurement. And on this Friday on, on Star Citizen Live, at the end, they said the current cut on every on Friday. They said the current cut of it of the ISC for this coming week is at 22 minutes, and it's all about the merchant. So and it's not done yet. It's not done yet. So just for you, Paula, I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and do it. So, brand new merchant man. Thank you. <laughs> well, your thoughts on Alien Week? Are you, what, what ships are we expecting? Do you expect new ships? Um, you know, or any like? What are you expecting from Alien Week as well? Other than obviously I'm hoping, a lot more information. Yeah, obviously a lot more information. A lot more information about the Benny Mitchell one too. Uh, I, I'm I'm hoping that they have some announced unannounced ship. So maybe I'm thinking maybe one of the uh, one or two of the unannounced ships will be one of the alien an alien ship that we haven't heard about. So looking forward to that. Um, we talked about it a bit on Soul Talk on Thursday. Uh, Kai Zen, Black Sky Legion, he mentioned that he thinks that we're going to see a mock-up model of the Bandit Merchantman on, 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 on the showroom floor. Like we did, remember how like a few years back on the IAE, they had like the, the javelin? On the on, on, on the floor, we could we could walk underneath it and and see how and to take a look under, under it under it. The address, mm -hmm. okay, the address. Yeah. So he, he, I think I think he's thinking that we will have something like that. We won't be able to go inside of it, but we'll be able to see the, to, to see what it look what it looks like. I don't know if if, if that'll come true, but um, he he got me hoping now. Um, I actually I completely it. forgot that the first notion of the, an in-game Idris was that was that and that blew my mind back then so much because it was landed in a hangar and you had uh you could go walk around it on the walls there were there were several floors that you could because just that notion just sold the scale of it because you you, you walked around it and then you went one, one floor down and your view didn't change that much Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. And when you got underneath it, it was like, I mean, your character would look it up. And I, I was afraid. I was afraid my character was going to get a strained neck from looking up so so so, 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 at it so long. And the the scale of it, like you, you could be, be at be at the the, the foot at, at the landing gear, and wow, that I mean, yeah. So we, I'm hoping I'm hoping he's right about that, but we'll see. Other than that, for Ellen Week, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll see the, all, the, all the old favorites come back. Um, they're gonna be the special ISC, obviously, and yeah, I can't think of anything more, more than I, I, I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it now. Unfortunately, I don't think that we'll see the BMM in that state because it needs texture work on the outside, so that means it needs to go to at least final art phase because CAG is not gonna put a gray box version. A no. completely clay, untextured version of a ship into the game. So maybe Alien Week is too soon for that, just because we're only getting a tour next week. Mm. Um, uh, maybe. So wait. So during Alien Week, have have there been events before? No, it's usually just no, a sale. It's just a sale. Yeah. So we. So I. We haven't even gotten a hollow at uh, IAE or or Invictus. Well, it's probably not going to be Invictus, but at IAE yet. Mm -hmm. So that that first, and then maybe uh, one of those in-game oh. models. Anything else you're expecting? But the only this? the only reason we only got that in-game model landed is because they don't want to spoil the interior for us. Yeah. Uh, any, your thoughts on any other things for Alien Week there, Darsh? Uh. 
Well, if we're getting an unannounced ship, that just means unannounced. So it's not mm-hmm. going to be the Santa Kia. It's not going to be the, what was it? The Volper? Volper. Yeah. Yes, Someone said Volper. Volper. Yeah, it's it's a, no, nothing that has been either leaked or talked about before. So it's something completely new. Uh, like the uh, the Ngata Kryland that we um, that that mm. was just yeah. announced out of the blue suddenly. Uh, so hopefully we get a non combat ship again, just something to do with the uh, with the the uh, the current tech that they're exploring. Maybe salvage, maybe refining something to to go along with the Odyssey or the Vulture. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You're expecting another killer? killer? We already have one. <laughs> yeah, it's called the Argo Cargo. It won. Yes. Mm. Argo Cargo it. is er- the everything killer. Drop it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Vertigo is back. I'm going to lead it to him, and then I'm going to go take my vibrator. Yeah, go for it. It's about that there time we're going to do it anyways. But uh, Vertigo, your thoughts on Alien Week? Uh, more ship sales. Yeah. Any any idea? What more the sh- lore posts. Do you think we're gonna get a a, a a new ship for sale? For um, a concept ship? I don't think I've heard any rumors about new concept ships coming out. Um, but it would be I wouldn't be super surprised if we didn't have like <clears throat> some alien ship. But like I said, I I haven't heard anything, not mm-hmm. from the leaks, from uh, anyone data mining stuff, not from Evil Cotti, not any of the contacts I've had. Um. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to have, like, the Vandal stuff come back up for sale. They may do a new concept ship. Uh, another Vandal ship, maybe the Vandal Stinger, may get sold. Um, <coughs> the Heavy Fighter, the Vandal Heavy Fighter. <coughs> Excuse me. <Damn. coughs> I'll be tickling my throat. So, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not expecting too much crazy stuff from, from Alien Week, other than, like, lore and ship sales that already exist, that we okay. already know about. I have a question. So, yeah. you know, they, they, they sold the Javelin, they sold the Idris. Do you think one day maybe they sold the Vandal Driller? Possibly. It depends. Like, the lore doesn't... It, lore would say no right now. Um, but, you know, I think CIG will sell everything at some point, you know, in game. Yeah, well, yeah, the, Vandal, yeah, well. the Vandal Driller is basically just a big transport ship for, like, the harvesters. They drop planets. Yeah, but it's it's also kind of like a... It's it's kind of like a destroyer. It's like a, a yeah. destroyer or, or something. Dangerous equivalent. Like yeah. It's, it's so like... So, they may... I mean, it's a it's a fairly prevalent pre- prevalent ship in the Vandal fleet, so you may have salvaged ones that come up for... But very limited quantity, similar to the Scythe. Yeah. Or it could be a recreation by... Uh, by yeah. Uh, by... Uh, Asperia. Asperia. Yeah. Um, I, oh, for, no. Alien, for Alien Week, I think in general, what we're, we're most likely going to see is um, I was looking at the ships, and right now we have the Santo Kiai, we have the Cartuol. That's coming out on Christmas, by the way. We have oh. the 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 Nox, the Santo Kiai. Yeah, because Santo Claus is going to bring it. Ah, uh, okay, damn it. Uh, <laughs> and the and and the uh, Gatak Raylan, right? So that's four ships. Uh, let's see with the Tavaran. We've got the Prowler and the Talon, and that's it. But the ba- and then the Banu, we've got the Banu Merchantman and the Banu Defender, and that's it. Um, and with the Vanduul, we have the Blade, the Scythe, the uh, uh, you know Glaive. the Glaive, and, and there's a couple other ones that are like in the in the distant future. Uh, that'll probably come in. So it's the ships, the, the the aliens that have the least representation in Star Citizen in terms of ships is the Banu and and the the Tavaran. So and oh. with the Banu merchantman coming out, they're probably finalizing all of the Banu stuff. So I wouldn't be no, surprised. No, Paul, you're wrong. It's the Kurthak. The Kurthak. That's true. Uh, we have zero uh, representation from the Kurthak. Kurthak, yeah. <laughs> Nothing actually, shame on you, actually, CIG. Actually, shame. Actually, shame. <laughs> <laughs> no representation of the of, of, of the various species. Um, but the what, what what color on the flag are the Kratok? Anyway, uh, they're, they're the color that has uh, that doesn't exist. I don't know because they don't exist yet. <laughs> the color of audacity. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh gosh, what is it? Um, oh, so I, I think more than likely we're going to see a bandy shit. 
if we see a new ship, just because of all of the way that things are, are, are working out. And I'd really love to see a Banu trade ship. We have trades and we have the, the, the combat ship, but we don't have like mining or salvage or refining or anything like that. So I'd like to see a Banu salvager slash miner. You can say something, Pastor? You know what I love to see? A Banu's take on a racing ship. Yeah, maybe. Fast car. It's, it's like, it's like look, the Banu don't understand. We'll talk about culture. racing here in a moment. <laughs> no, but I'm saying the Banu don't understand human culture. There's, I would love to see what their take on racing would be. Fast car. Instead of a Banu ship, I, I, I'm going to con counter your, your guess and say maybe a Banu vehicle this time. Could be. Ground vehicle. Ooh. Ground vehicle. Like, like, Ooh, like like a big hovering truck. Mm -hmm. now, now, I know. I, I think Banu probably will be wheeled. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm imagining no, no. wheeled vehicle. Crab, crabs. It's a crab. Crabs. It's little, little legs. That's a walking like, like, a walker. Like, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The, 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 yeah, sorry, the Shion are the hover, hover. Yeah. Hover turtles. Banu has yeah, the crab. living crab interior. All right. The Banu Defender is a crab. <laughs> so yes, crabs. They must have crabs. Uh, <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you could touch yeah. it before that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, a, a, a brand new vehicle. Um, Patton he, he, he he's a regular on uh, Soul Citizen. He 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 he's been clamming about that for ages. So I hope hoping that for him. All right. No, but that... the Banu is not ages. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's that's an HC Vertigo level bad in a joke. There we go. Mm. Well, he's not here. Someone had to, had take to make it. it. <laughs> no, 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 no one had to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to call this out for this will be it for our discussion. We're going to move on to the question and answer session. If you enjoyed this podcast, as someone who just popped into the chat or very early said, I've been watching or listening to this to this for months and I didn't know that you do this live. We do film this live uh, in front of a live studio chat uh, every Saturdays at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Come join us at twitch.tv slash theastropub on those Saturdays to watch it and join in the chat and ask your own questions if you'd like to. Um, and make sure you're following all these wonderful content creators on their own their own um, uh, channels. Go to JRDF, uh, you know, get, check out those models, maybe uh, pick up a couple, uh, join, join Fastcart and Soul Citizens and uh, the various other, the, the 15 other different projects that Fastcart manages to get himself involved in. Uh, and of course, check out Richie Vertigo at twitch.tv slash the Astro, uh, yeah, track him out at twitch.tv <laughs> slash the Astro Pub, <laughs> twitch.tv slash HC Vertigo. Uh, and oh, I gotta say, Paul, you read the script to the letter. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, thank you all for, for joining us. I hope to see you next time. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. Vertigo, stop bopping! <laughs> That's not racist. <laughs>